Hi everyone, this is Jason here from Nathaniel School of Music. In this exercise, I'm going to try and cover a lot of things for you as a piano player to get better. Uh, first of all, you must have heard by the intro that uh, unfortunately this video is more for people who can already play the piano, intermediate or advanced students or you should have been playing it for I would say about six months or so to a year depending on how you've learned. But if you're a beginner, I would not discourage you from watching the lesson. You can watch it and try and learn some concepts along the way but as a more intermediate or advanced learner you're going to learn a lot of things in this lesson you're going to learn about creating a baseline you're going to learn about playing accented phrases you're going to learn about how to keep a steady pulse different chord voicings and it's a serious hand hand independence workout which is i guess the main thing piano People want to learn. Teachers, players, students, everyone just wants to get their hands cracking. And I think this exercise has enough and more variations to achieve that for you and get your get you to be more confident with your hand independence. For me, hand independence is not doing it task by task. It's about gradually improving confidence and it's always a gradual process it's not going to happen overnight so this exercise could be one step forward or one big step forward towards getting these things going harmonically there's a lot going on there's spread chords there's thirds in the right hand which you're going to learn and it's on an interesting scale one of my favorite scales f minor or a flat major so let's get cracking the first thing i'm going to talk about is the bass line let's get our keyboards out get a book out and you'll also see the notation on the screen you'll see some of my handwritten notes as well if you'd like to pause the video and download a high quality copy do consider going to our patreon page and getting everything related to this lesson the midi the notation the notes and whatnot all the theoretical things uh, before we actually start with the bass line let's just look at the scale a flat major or f minor could say F natural minor not the harmonic it should also be cool but this is on the natural fine so the melody we'll see a little later the melody is very easy I'll show you that but the left hand the bass line I've composed is over a 3-4 but it's phrased rather differently let me play that for you Okay, a very piano bass line emulating an actual bass you could say but the fingers and let me just slow this down for you the chords first of all F minor D flat major E flat major C minor very retro glam glam rock era chords so that's the bass line Okay, slow that down. F, F, C, F, F, C. And we do an A flat at the end. That allows your pinky to go and play D flat, the root of the next chord. D flat. E flat. D flat passing down to C. First I do. Second time I do the whole C minor chord first time because it's latching on to that F second time okay that's the ending variation otherwise the bass line is the same whole thing again C D flat E flat it's a little slower for you E flat. Could start with the chords, just block it in the right hand. Block the chords. 
play them for the whole bar until you've got that left hand fairly comfortably little faster important responsibility of the piano is piano is always two instruments this is one of the only instruments where it's actually two instruments it feels like that this is one instrument this would be exactly what a bass guitar plays and this would be what some other people play so uh, some people call the piano a one man band i would prefer to call it a one man orchestra because a band is small for a piano it will destroy a band at least i think it can so it depends on how much you practice so you have to invest time into these things none of this will happen instantly you have to do it do it slowly have a good night sleep try it again the next day you're never a lot of the videos we find on youtube you know because of the video needing to reach people i guess is to give you an instant you know high or an instant thrill with an exercise and that's not it's going to last for just that one video you're not going to actually execute it a lot of this stuff needs time especially at a more advanced level so repeat 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 just go on and on with it again with the chords and then we'll uh, bring in our melody and that's the that's the song e flat c minor f minor b e flat e flat so you could look at the notation and also look at my connecting notes between the chords first time then otherwise it's fifths and octaves third c again then sound good in the right hand if you ask me it's a bass line anyway so that's about the bass line i hope that that's good moving forward uh, if you would like uh, do uh, get yourselves a copy of the notation if you read music it will help you digest this a lot better in your own time there's also a muse score file which you can open and you know uh, spell out the notes for yourself there's also midi available all waiting for you in a folder on patreon coming to the melody the melody is played in thirds let me play it for you and then teach Three by four, but it's phrased a little interestingly. One, two, three. One, two, three. Uh, waltz, basically, but a very weird waltz. So, <clears throat> and there are two things I do to embellish this melody. First of all, I'm playing thirds. rather rudimentary if you ask me so stack up a thirds check out my notes i'll i would have written all the thirds for every note so it will help you that's the melody could also do a little bit of a glide like a guitar player does a hammer on you can copy that guy another hammer there so to hammer just flick like a game of carrom board flick your index finger into the middle finger and make sure to lift that index otherwise it'll sound horrible so you have to flick it it's a trigger another trigger there it's 
sometimes i had some ghosts so what is a ghost wherever you have a gap just try and squeeze in a root you know slowly there we go that extra f whole lesson that's all the right hands ever going to do okay so that's going to stay consistent only the left hand now let's first do the bass riff which we learned with that melody slow it down so you get all your hit points isolated there we go and could end like that with a unison a faster one exercise if you ask me which which will be tougher to play slowly than faster if your fingers are able if you've done your exercises and so on you should be able to play this at speed but slower speed is what i would recommend initially to improve your sense of timing to make sure your independence is right and when you do play it to speed or at a normal speed try to always latch on to the pulse see my head is moving in a very very consistent way right guys so that is your first challenge or main mission behind this exercise to get that independence going now a lot of people ask me sometimes what is the time signature of stuff you play because sometimes a lot of my music is very prog rock or uh, heavy metal influence so because of that they play around with the accent so you don't really know if it's a 3 4 or a 5 4 or whatever it may be sometimes i may actually be playing a very simple time signature which in this lesson it's actually a 3 by 4 just to show you 1 2 3 1 2 it's a Three by four, I think. One, two. So to play the three by four in your left hand, you could take all the four chords: F minor, D flat major, E flat major, C minor. Some nice open, dense chord, spread voiced. One five octave, and play them in a pulse. Three, one, two, three. If you are not too sure of spread voicing, we will leave a, a link in the description. I've done an entire playlist on this subject slowly, so you can head over there after this video. So you want to play the pulse three by four now in the left hand. Three, one, two. So what did we do earlier? The bass line. that very prog rock or progressive bass line now we are just doing a normal waltz 3 by 4 but in the pulse with spread voicings okay so that's 3 by 4 and another thing you could do to kind of conclude this uh, chaos of independence and this workout you could do dotted notes you could do dotted quavers in your left which goes <laughs> give 
gives you a very polyrhythmic feel right it's almost like a 3 meets 4 kind of a vibe i'll play that and then break it So let's just look at what's going on with a dotted quaver. A quaver is half of a beat. So a dotted quaver would be 0.75 of a beat or three fourths of a beat, right? So it's going to be a bit weird initially. It'll be one e and a two e and a three e. It's going to be all the off beats and almost never the on beat. So that's what I love about dotted quavers. Used a lot. It's almost used in. It's used in almost every. metal song you'll ever find every progressive rock song so i love the dotted feel in music so if you can you could try and achieve that it's a serious workout for your mind more than your body if you ask me 1 2 3 you're actually counting 4 because 4 threes are 12 right so if you take 3 if you take the value of 3 semi quavers and then do 3 fours are 12 if you think about it that's uh, that's 3 fours are 12 it's a 3 by 4 uh, in the semi quaver world four sets of semi quavers would be 4 threes are 12 but it's grouped in a very very strange way let me try and sing it actually a lot tougher for me to sing it and compared to playing it on the piano but you get the idea back to crotch hits this is where everyone head bangs for the heavy part like to give you that chaos so that was the first thing i taught you then the pulse and now the dotted try to end there and uh, something for you beginners if you watch this video and you found everything tough here's something which you definitely can do so stick around and i hope it at least taught you something if you can't do it if you couldn't execute it keep trying otherwise do this version which is i think a lot more doable nail your right hand the way i taught you just play the roots of the chords in your left hand and see if you want to either whack it as a dotted minim which is a three counted note sounds great i think or the pulse don't do the fancy spread voicing yet because your hands may not be used to it maybe you're just starting off with triads and so on right guys so that's the that's the exercise which i composed i i i will probably give it a name or i probably won't give it a name it's just a a chaotic f minor exercise maybe that should be the name who knows let's see so now what we shall do is conclude everything and then wind up so we did um this consistent melody in the right first we learn that bass line the chaotic bass line okay that with that we did the pulse then the dotted feel then the simpler version with just chord roots and over a pulse
right so this entire exercise was kind of influenced from one of my riffs which is also there on youtube you could consider checking that out and it pretty much a, a, a few students asked me to break it down because they like that tune or that composition so that's what this lesson is all about we've taken one of the riffs which i which i release every day on the youtube channel and i've just broken it down and hopefully this improves your hand independence a great deal your chord awareness your voicing your intervals a lot of things have fun with the drill and make sure if you can if you've done the drill to send it to us somehow and we are on instagram so you could probably put it up on your instagram and tag us and we'll be happy to go through it and also reshare it if that's what it's called and um, yes don't forget to get yourself a copy of the notation the midi and stuff from patreon uh, also feel free to share the video with your musician friends leave us a comment uh, head over to net danielschool.com if you'd want to uh, sign up for some of our structured lessons courses live lessons or video courses and stay awesome cheers